FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today is 11 10 2020. Well, if you are, regardless what your political affiliation, your oath of loyalty, whatever party it may be to, this show is for you because we are going to give you very concrete and absolute ways to deal with your post election stress syndrome. Doesn't matter what party you're in because you're suffering. Millions of, of you out there are suffering, and we're going to try to help. So just listen to what the good doctor, Dr. John Huber, has to say, and you will get through this, we promise you. Now, if you've got any questions, if you're seeking a referral for a therapist in your area, please send me an email, kl at kerrylutz.com. I will do a Google search for you, and I will find a qualified person, practitioner, licensed practitioner, who can help you deal with it. All right, kl at kerrylutz.com. Without further ado, Dr. Huber, hey, I've been meditating, I've been reading Bible passages, something I've never done in my life, and I've uh, found a way forward here where I'm really not overly concerned about the future. Uh, anxiety comes from one of two things, right? Worrying about the past, regretting the past, or worrying about the future. So if we can just stay present, then we're not going to have to deal with it, right? Absolutely. Staying in the present is the biggest thing. And, you know, the, the problem with anxiety is it escalates and it becomes depression. And, you know, and then people really start shutting down, even if, you know, even if you're able to function with with acute anxiety attacks, panic attacks and things like that. When it hits that depression stage, then then you're in real trouble. So listen to this show today. I think it's really important that we we talk through this. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what your political affiliation is, whether you lean right, left, center, libertarian, communist, uh, Zoroastrian, whatever it might be. Really, there's no need to suffer over an election ever, is there? Absolutely not, because in the scope of things, you, you know, you can do what you can do, and that is to go place your vote. And then you have to you have to trust. Now, what we're seeing here is some doubt being thrown in that trust about people manipulating software. And, you know, you get technology in this old story, garbage in, garbage out. But now if you have good information in, because humans write the programs, uh, we're seeing that, hey, we might be not writing them as accurately as we could, and that could create more problems. <laughs> well, you know, in 1984, not to get political, because uh, this is a family show, we don't talk about subjects like that, which are really for mature audiences, but 1984, we uh, learned that two plus two equals five. Now, if you're working for the Dominion uh, vote counting company, uh, two plus two could really be any number you want it to be, couldn't it? Absolutely. And, you know, that's why we got to check it out. And for no other reason, this anxiety going on, because it doesn't matter what side you're on, and if you're a libertarian or anything else, we want to know that our votes are actually representing our votes, period. I mean, that, it, we have to have integrity. And it's like it's like a relationship. When you lose that trust between that partner and you, you know, nothing else really matters. Trust in the system is what allows democracy and our representative republic to move forward. Right. I could not agree with you more. And uh, I know a lot of you out there feel like you're battered spouses, like uh, like you're married to a total philanderer who's never been faithful from uh, the time you went on your honeymoon. Uh, but the fact of the matter is what happens when you get anxious is your um, your imagination becomes your reality. Isn't that so, doctor? Oh, absolutely. Uh, that that <laughs> that imagination and it causes what we call overthinking things. And you start trying to analyze and one little bitty incre increase in your anxiety leads to even more fantasy and more elaborate fantasy that just grows and grows and grows. And it is very difficult to uh, <laughs> to function with in reality. Right. And uh, no, I know one time I got anxious and there was no real reason. I think it was just a stage in life. 
But for about two, three weeks, I was really anxious. And some genius said, now, how much coffee you drink in a day? And I said, I don't know, like an average of three or four cups a day. And But I said, I've been doing this for 25, 30 years. And just cut it out. Just stop it. And, you know, I stopped drinking the coffee. Within two, three days, my anxiety was gone. I was sleeping like a baby. And I wound up doing decaf for a lot of years. But now I drink regular, but I limit it to one cup per day. Right. I mean, when you do these stimulants, even if you're not aware of them, nicotine, caffeine and uh, whatever other crystal meth, yeah. crystal meth, whatever other cognitive <laughs> yeah. enhancers you might be doing, that can really trigger anxiety. Adderall, reactions. Adderall, Adderall, all of that. Well, what we have to realize is anxiety is basically you have you have this autonomic nervous system. It's your sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, and it's designed to pro- help you protect yourself. So let's say you're hiking in, in Yellowstone National Park, right? Yosemite, wherever, and you're walking down and you see this path and you go down the path and you look over there and you see this mama bear. And on the other side of the path, you see a baby cub. <laughs> Your fight or flight mechanism, that sympathetic nervous system takes control and it stimulates, increases heart rate, respiration, changes blood flow from the, the digestive tract and other things like that to your muscles to help you fight. It also transfers blood from your higher areas of thinking to the lower areas, your, your limbic system, where all the emotions are. It's kind of like the lizard brain. If we go back evolutionarily, you know, lizards have that part of the brain like we do. And it puts that blood down there and it increases that ability of that emotionality to fire off. And that does a couple things while you're, in the stage of flight and you're running, you know, it makes you not think of anything else and worry about how close to the edge of the cliff you're getting, you know, because you're fearful for your life that adrenaline is pumping and those emotions are running rampantly. If on the other hand, you're not fast enough and the bear catches you, it does the same thing, but allows you to fight like a maniac because that's the only chance you have in that kind of situation. Uh, And it's a fight or flight mechanism. Then our parasympathetic system comes back and calms that down. Now, let's say you get up in the morning, you start your day with a cup of coffee because you're not really awake yet. And, you know, you toss and turn, maybe you have a little sleep apnea you don't know about. And you drink that coffee in the morning and things are going great and you're functioning well. And at about 11 o'clock, you start kind of dragging because really you need protein. Your body's telling you it's almost time to eat and you don't have time to stop. So you have another cup of coffee and then you get to lunch and you eat your lunch and now you're feeling kind of full. So you have another cup of coffee on top of that. (laughs) You're looking at three cups and it's not even one o'clock. And all of a sudden your parasympathetic system can't Mm. calm your body down because the stimulant is overriding that. So the sympathetic side the side that triggers all of that, that adrenaline and stuff is just cranking up your fight or flight mechanism, but there's nothing to be a fearful of. And what happens is you start interpreting that as anxiety, maybe some paranoia. The only reason somebody must be watching me or something's going on, I'm not aware of. And that increases that anxiety and it builds on that. And man, you know, what do you do? You have another cup of coffee about 2.30 because you're starting to run down at the end of the day. And it just stimulates and keeps that going. And it'll take a few days to a week once you quit drinking caffeine like that to get that out of your system and have your body actually utilize the parasympathetic system and calm everything down and get your blood flowing normally again. And feeding your executive centers of your brain, your frontal lobe, where you make clear, well-informed decisions. And, you know, we know a lot of people who really, really function well in that situation because they have something that goes on a little bit differently. Most of us aren't like that. But, you know, the really good trial attorneys, they love an argument because it pulls, it doesn't go into their emotional centers. It goes right into their executive functioning. And the more they get wound up, the clearer and more tunnel vision they have, and they can pull information out and data that in a normal conversation they'd never have. So, you know, good, good attorneys are, they don't function like the rest of us, just like, you know, those pro athletes that are, are, are at their peak performance, but then their three-year-old kid gets the cold and they're off a half a step. And that makes them from number one. Now they're number 12 in the league because they've got that half step. They just lost for something that you and I would go, our kids get sick all the time. Get over it, you know? 
Yeah. They and, just, and it's they're yeah. just wired slightly differently. And that's the beauty of being a human. We're all slightly different. And within the, the, the respect that we are human beings and we're the same that way, but each one of us has our strengths and weaknesses and, uh, Take, take that as you start getting this anxiety and realize we all go through this. This isn't because you're defective. What you need to do is learn how to cope and deal. And that's really what it's about uh, because, let's face it, as the cliche goes, we can't control the world outside of us. All we can do is control our reaction, our reactions to it. And so we have to kind of give up. Uh, the illusion of control because uh, it never really existed in the first place and really Absolutely. accept what's happening. All right, this has happened. And it's like I tell people like in financial crises like COVID, right, really was resulted in the global economic collapse. And I said, at that point, I said to myself, you know, it's exactly like 08 and 09. Right. And there are winners and there are losers in every crisis, every collapse. I said, the difference here is I am in charge and in control of my emotions. I am not going to panic about it being the end of the world because if it is, there's nothing I can do anyway. And in all likelihood, it probably isn't because it never has been before. And with that, with that clarity and uh, with my emotions, I don't want to say under control because that could be suppressing them and that isn't really controlling them. But with a total free flow of my emotional state, I was able to make decisions. And this has been one of the uh, best from a business and personal standpoint, one of the best periods of my life, doctor. And I awesome. felt I felt like uh, Frankel there, Max Frankel. Uh, <laughs> I mean, thank God I wasn't in Auschwitz. But I was right. in an unbelievably unpleasant, uncomfortable situation where I couldn't even go out to dinner. The only way I could go out to dinner is go to the drive through at McDonald's. And there, the, you know, the, the meal is worse than the, uh, the hunger. But, uh, <laughs> but, you know, it just, after a while, when I accepted the situation, hey, I can't do anything because the restaurants are closed. Uh, I can't open them myself. So you know what? Got to make the best of it. And it really turned into an amazing period of my life where I've been, you know, really, uh, I don't want to say euphoric because that would be, that would lead to a whole nother set of symptoms. But I've been uh, extremely happy and uh, self-satisfied, put it that way. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Financial Survival Network is brought to you today by Orin Resources, a junior exploration company with the appetite of a major. It's hot on the trail of the next globally significant discovery, creating enormous potential upside for you, the shareholder. Orin is one of the most aggressive exploration companies pursuing high-grade, scalable gold and copper deposits and has a premier seven project portfolio, including its two flagships, Committee Bay in the Arctic and Sombrero in Peru. Oren's unparalleled technical team and highly experienced management has a history of success in advancing and monetizing exploration assets. No wonder Oren's been called one of the best in the junior exploration sector. Oren trades on the TSX and the NYSE under AUG. To learn more, go to Oren Re Resources.com. That's A U R Y N resources.com. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Absolutely. It's an opportunity. And that's what people forget. These challenges are opportunities. And, you know, I think I think the, the people who are handling the pandemic the best are the ones who are changing their business plan, so to speak. You know, I know I've had to look at at that and and, you know, I've got some other things going that, that I wouldn't have had had the pandemic pandemic not been here and you know and it looks it looks brighter than i could have imagined especially even even going into this year before we knew the pandemic was going to shut everything down you know i i thought this was a great year and, I, and it's turning out that it's becoming a great year but for a totally different reason because i didn't exactly. shut those doors exactly so you know it's the old chinese cliche and i don't even know if it's true or not but the uh, symbol for uh, crisis. It's two symbols. One is danger. The other is opportunity. I don't know if that's true or not. 
And in uh, I, I will check with my Mandarin okay. teacher Please. Thursday night. I do I do Mandarin twice oh. a week. So right. yeah, we'll get to the bottom of this then. <laughs> one thing I one thing I do know is true is that the Hebrew word for luck is mazel, and that consists of three separate symbols. One is time, one is place, and the third one is action. And so that's all that luck is: time, place, and action. And Really, yeah, I don't want to like say uh, be a cockeyed optimist. You know, when when uh, God closes a door, He opens a window, or uh, or burns your house down, and then you know you you go to a new place, whatever. But but there are unforeseen, untold benefits to every adverse situation that you find yourself in in life, and and you, you can never lose sight of that. You can't, and you have to look beyond what you're used to seeing, and that's reframing and changing perspective. And you know, you may not get it at first, but you have to keep trying. And the more times you change and look at things differently, the better you're going to find th that you're able to see that next evolution of yourself that you never thought of before. Yeah, yeah. and it takes practice. Yeah, I mean, you, you said luck. Luck mm -hmm. is being able to capitalize on an opportunity. And how do you do that? You're prepared. So you always have to be making yourself a better person. And then that opportunity comes around and you're like, I'm ready. I'm prepared. I can do this. And sometimes you just have to tell yourself that because you don't have a clue. Hey, and one thing I found very helpful, I've been doing it recently and I never really did them in my life. Because this is, again, it's a kind of a cliche to me, and I didn't really put a lot of faith in them. Affirmations. I have found them <laughs> yeah, to be absolutely. of immeasurable benefit. Been doing them for the past 30 plus days when I walk the dog because I got downtime and nobody bothering me. And right. my God, they're, they're transformative. They can be. Okay. So, how many days into that 30 days? Did you notice that your thought processes changed, that, that you were more op optimistic? How, how many days into that of you doing that? I would say seven to 10 days. At the and most. that's what the research shows. Yeah, yeah. it shows, shows, you know, somewhere between a week to two weeks of doing affirmations, you start to actually benefit from them. So I, I hear people, my patients, my students when I taught, oh, well, I tried them for three days and nothing happened. So I gave up on it. Right. Well, that's like, like meditation. That's not trying it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You have to do meditation for it to work. And it takes, you know, it can take up to eight weeks before your body starts to recognize that you're meditating. And when you do that, when your body recognizes it, when your head is somewhere else, when you're in your head thinking about bills or your relationships or your kids or whatever's going on, your body knows you're moving into meditation and it doesn't care where your brain is. It pulls everything down with it. Because yeah, everything happens in the mind, right? Yeah. There is an objective reality. You know, the Twin Towers get blown up. They're no longer there. And nobody, right. can, nobody can dispute that fact. Deny that. Yeah. Right? But, but most of what you believe to be reality has little connection to what's actually happening around you. It's all in your mind. Right. I mean, that's where so you change your belief in what's happening and you change what's happening Focus on the present. Yeah. And fo focus on the present because you can't if, if you really knew what was going on tomorrow, I would like to buy you a plane ticket and meet <laughs> you in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I would. So, yeah, well, we have glimmers. <laughs> but in terms of really knowing one thing I know is that uh, most people who say they know don't. Well, as the saying goes, those who those who know don't say, and those who say don't know, and uh, absolutely, that's the way I look at that. Well, I th hope that we have made some progress in uh, helping to alleviate your your post election stress disorder, and and giving you some skills and some avenues that you can follow up on your own. Again, if not, send me an email. And uh, let me know, and I will uh, Google a practitioner who will find you. Are you doing uh, telemedicine now, Doctor Huber? Well, actually, you know that that's part of of what we're we're moving forward to, and our website should be up in about two weeks. So excellent. So if you can yeah, hold out. So. 
you can hold out for two weeks, you get the real thing, Dr. John Huber, and uh, he'll give you some affirmations. Can you give us a couple of affirmations now, doctor, that we could use right away before we talk to you? One that I've used a lot in the last week with my patients is the fact that they're perfect the way they are and you're perfect the way you are. You know, mm -hmm. everybody is designed to be themselves and they're not designed to be like anybody else. Mm -hmm. So take that perfectness, find your real strengths and focus on those. You are perfect just the way that you are. And if you're trying to go against your strengths, you're going to have some problems. So step back and reevaluate. And maybe you do need to be that new business owner, but maybe the way you're going about it's the wrong way. Use your strengths. You're perfect the way you are. All right. Hey, we're going to take that one to heart, doctor. And just tell us how we uh, find you, where we connect with you. Easiest way to find me is at my website, mainstreammentalhealth.org. But you can also get there through drpsycho.org, D-R-P-S-Y-C-H-O dot O-R-G. Excellent. All right. Always a pleasure, doctor. Any questions, comments, you want me to do a Google search and find you the right uh, therapist, just email me. I'm just kidding about that. K-L at kerrylutz.com. Twitter feed at Kerry Lutz. <laughs> Facebook page is Financial Survival Network, and go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Sign up for your free newsletter. Dr. Huber, always a pleasure. Keep up the great work. We'll talk to you again real soon. Excellent. Thank you so much, and have an amazing day. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.